Hey guys, welcome to a new webinar. Today we're going to talk about one of the most relevant new topics in the industry, virtual productions. You may probably know about this technique thanks to shows like The Mandalorian, which wasn't the first production to use it, but it was definitely the one that pushed this technology further, opening new opportunities. For those that don't know what virtual production means, it is basically the use of LED panels on set to normally project backgrounds for the shooting. And most of the time those backgrounds are panoramic clips or directly 360 clips, so it's another way to use 360 content in non-VR projects. In this webinar we will talk about this technique, some of the benefits that we get from it, and how to create this kind of 360 footage for virtual sets with Mystica VR and Mystica Boutique. So let's start. The concept behind virtual production is not new, and in fact it has been used for quite a long time in the CGI world. Let's imagine a sphere. If we wrap a 360 clip on that sphere, we will get this result. We are seeing the result from the outside, but from the inside we have the classical planar view of a 360 environment. Ok, I know this is pretty basic, but now is when things get interesting. I'm in a 3D virtual space so I can do whatever I want, like placing this guy in the center of my sphere. I'm not trying to integrate it, just put it in the center. And because the sphere texture, the 360 clip, is set as a light source, my character here is getting light from every direction in a consistent way with the texture. There is no other light source in this shot, just the environment projecting light. And again, we have a really nice consistency in color temperature, exposure, hue, etc. So as you can imagine, this helps quite a lot to build any shot in a quicker and realistic way. Now, how can we adapt this technology to the real world? Well, the first obvious thing is that the sphere sets doesn't exist. Any real shooting set will have a flat ground. So let's put it here. We are setting the flat ground a bit below the middle point of the sphere just to be able to create some perspective. But the most important thing is that we notice that normally we don't really need to use the nadir of our 360 clips, so we can forget about cleaning the tripod or any other element in that area. Now what happens with the sky? Well, it will depend on the virtual set. Some of them use a top panel, especially the most expensive ones, but normally that part is replaced by conventional light source, which are cheaper and deliver similar results. So just to keep things simple, we will remove it too. But keep in mind that the Zenith can be useful in some sets. So now we have this segment of the original sphere. Next question is, where do we place the cameras and equipment? We need to open our 360 ring. Again, to keep things simple, I will keep only 180 degrees to have a space for the cameras. So we finally end with something like this. Even if this explanation looks a bit obvious and simple, this can help us to understand that we only use a relatively small area of our original 360 shot. So we don't need to take care of many aspects that need to be covered in a normal 360 shooting, like again cleaning the tripod or hiding from the 360 camera, because you will only use a segment of the 360 space. It's true that we don't get all the benefits of using a full 360 environment like we saw at the beginning, because at the end, from the lighting point of view, we only get the background of the shot, but even though we get a consistent background lighting and a much better integration. We can illuminate the rest of the shot using conventional light source to support this background light. Now you probably understand some of the benefits of using this technique during the shooting, but let's mention a couple of them. For this part, let's use our own virtual set. Here we have placed a top light source to simulate the sky and the main subject is this car. Metallic surfaces are normally problematic, but in virtual productions they can work really well. As you can see in this close-up shot, the environment is reflected in the metallic surface in a consistent way. You can try to do the same thing with a green screen. Light intensity of course will be different, but the most problematic thing is the reflection. With a green screen the whole shot is contaminated, so it is difficult to make a quick selection. With a virtual set, colors and light are consistent, so we normally won't have these problems so it will save time in compositing and of course in grading. Another great point is that it helps to integrate in a quick way the background and the foreground. In this shot all we have done is to play with the focal length of the camera, to focus on the main character, 
and it automatically blends with the background. Now let's see how to create those backgrounds with Mystica Boutique and Mystica VR. For stitching, Mystica VR and Mystica Boutique works in the same way, but if you need better control over the color journey or you need more advanced tools, Mystica Boutique is the way to go. In any case, we will see both tools here. I will start with Mystica VR. There is not a big difference between stitching a normal 360 clip with a background 360 clip. The process is the same, but we need to keep in mind one important detail. We need a VR rig with good color depth, because we want the best possible quality and it's pretty normal to make color space transformations during the workflow. Considering this aspect, we can use professional VR rigs like the one that I have here, which is the new Kandao Obsidian Pro, or custom rigs based on raw cameras like RED with RED Komodo, Blackmagic, Sony, etc. Let's use this footage from Obsidian Pro. Well, the first aspect is that this camera is pretty big, so it will work much better for long distance view rather than close up ones. The stitching can be done based on three things internal metadata, presets, or external stitch with softwares like PT GUI. I will use presets as the main way to work because remember that we include that service of creating the presets for you with Mystica VR or Mystica Boutique. In any case, as a quick demonstration, I will show you how you can create your own templates in PTGUI and then import those templates in Mystica VR to create the perfect stitch. The first step is to enable here the one input mode, disable the mosaic mode, and enable again here the overlay mode. Now with this overlay, I need to center the lenses of all the cameras in my VR rig. So with Alt, I can decrease the size of this overlay, and with the left button, I can just center to the right position of the lens. I need to do it again with all the cameras, so I click the second one, and just drag and move it. You just need to do this step once, because once you have your template created, you can use your template directly. So let's go fast with all the lenses. Of course, if you just spend more time and you get a more fine adjustment, you will get a better result in your final stitch. But just as a quick demonstration, I will calibrate all my lenses in a quick way. Once I have it, all I need to do is to go to a Stitch and External Stitch. This will open PTGUI automatically. There are plenty of tutorials out there explaining how PTGUI works, and we even have a couple of tutorials explaining some advanced settings that are useful for Mystica VR as well. In this particular case, because this is again a quick demonstration of how to create your own template, I will go only uh, with the basic settings. So here in the Craft Factor, I will set 1. And here in the focal length, I will choose in the choose preset ultra wide angle lens and generic fisheye lens. Okay, and then I will click in align images. Once it's finished, PT will give me this template. Again, I can get a better results uh, by working with some advanced settings, but this will work for now. So I can just save this project in PT by clicking in file and save project or save project as, and I can import that project into Mystica VR directly. Once your file is saved, you can just import into Mystica by just dragging and dropping here in the visual editor, just disable the mosaic mode, and there we go. We have the basic layout, the basic template imported in Mystica. The stitches is, is still not done because we still have some mismatches here in color and there are some geometry problems that will require the option of the optical flow, but as a starting point, this is really great. Now, we can continue using this template, but as I told you at the beginning, we will use preset as our main way to work because we get better results, because at the end, those presets are created by the ECO, so it, they are perfectly calibrated uh, to work with, with Mystica VR. So in that particular case, instead of use uh, the PT GUI template, I will use the internal template, the internal preset for this camera. Okay, so now we are going to start again from the scratch. I don't have the shot stitch. If I disable the mosaic view, you will see all the cameras in the center. That's, a, that's basically uh, the obvious way to check that the shot is not stitched. So basically, instead of using now the template uh, created in PTGUI, I will use the preset, the internal preset for this camera in Mystica VR. So all I have to do is to go to here, to the, my cameras panel, right click, load preset. And this will open the library of presets to select the right preset for this camera, which is the Kandao Obsidian Pro. I will select the file, click in open, and automatically we'll get a really similar result to the one that we get uh, with the PTGUI template. Uh, now, 
the calibration of the camera right now is better because the template has been uh, created with more time and, and using more advanced tools. But we still have some problem that we saw with the PTW template, which is basically the mismatching color. And there are still some geometry problems that we need to fix with the optical flow. Now, starting with the, with the color problem, uh, well, the first issue is that there is no transition between cameras. So if, I, if I enable here the overlays, we see that there is no feather area between cameras. That's the reason why uh, the mismatch in color is pretty obvious. If I enable the feather, we see that the mismatch starts to disappear. Now, there is still some color problems here, as we can see in some of the cameras. So I think it's worth it to use the matching color tools in Mystica VR to see their potential and how they can help us to fix these kind of issues. So I'm going to remove the feather so we can see it clearly. And we have here all the cameras and again, with no feather between them without, without any transition between them. And first I'm going to go to the color and click in match color. Now Mystica will analyze all the lenses and it will basically try to match the color between all the cameras. Now we still have some differences in here and the reason of those differences again is because there is no feather between them because now if I enable the feather we will see how those differences absolutely disappear. We don't even have um, a small mismatches like we had previously without applying the match color option. So now from the color point of view, the result is really great. Now there are still some geometry problems that can be found in any VR shot, especially if we look in the transition area between lenses, for example, here, I'm going to enable the overlay so you can see it. We have here the camera two and the camera three, and this is the feather area between them. In that area, we can find blurred image or double image that is created by this kind of mismatches in, in the geometry area. To fix those, we need to enable the optical flow. Optical flow is really important for video clips and it's not so important for uh, still images, although uh, it can be really, really helpful too, but it's especially important for clips with movement because it allows to basically remove these kind of artifacts, remove these kind of geometry problems and keep the consistency between lenses across the whole sequence. So in order to fix those uh, problems, I just need to go to here to use optical flow and enable the toggle. And as you can see in a before and after, Mystica will analyze the shot and recreate the pixels in a way that it fix the geometry problems of this shot. If the shot has more obvious problems, you probably would like to go to positions and click in improve offsets and improve angles to get a better matching. But in this particular case with this preset, I just need to I just need to use the optical flow to get a perfect stitch from the geometry point of view. Now there is another issue here in this particular shot, which is this area here with the creator of the clip and we see many artifacts around him. This is because uh, he's really close to the camera and as I told you at the beginning, this camera is really big. So uh, it's really great for long distance view, but not so great probably with uh, objects that are close to it. Because of the interocular distance, we are getting this problem. In fact, if we enable the VR mode, we see that the creator here is really close to the camera and that's the reason why optical flow is not enough to fix these kind of problems. Um, as I told you, basically because we're working in virtual sets, we can just ignore this part and focus on other part of my shots to use it as a background. But there are some scenarios or some circumstances where probably an object that is close to the camera is useful for the virtual set and you have this problem, then you need to fix it. Well, fix this kind of issues in Mystica VR is really simple. So all I have to do is to enable my overlays I'm going to disable the optical flow to go faster and take the camera one to create in there an edge point. The edge point allows me to move the stitch line and to mask the object that I want to basically fix. And then I'm moving basically the optical flow and all the artifacts problems in an area that is safer for, for my image. So once I have it, I can just disable the overlay mode and just enable again the optical flow and there we go. Now we can say that my shot is perfectly stitched for the virtual set or maybe to continue in the post-production workflow for the grading, compositing or any other adjustment that we want to do. In fact, in this shot, we have here the shadow of the tripod. I'm not going to focus on the nadir because as we saw, as we say at the beginning, um, 
this is not a relevant area for a virtual set, but we have the shadow here projected that can be problematic. So we can fix that later in Mystica Boutique, for example, or in any other compositing uh, software. Before jumping to Mystica Boutique to talk about more advanced stuff related with grading or compositing, let's talk about a couple of features that are really important for virtual sets. The first one is color space transformations. Here in Mystica VR we have the option to set the input gamma and the input gamut for the selected clip and the output gamma and the output gamut for the final delivery. So for example if we are working in Rec 709 like this is the case, I can transform from Rec 709 to for example linear light aces and we can just integrate Mystica VR in a more complex scenario where ACES is the main color engine to keep the consistency between softwares and cameras. We have the full color science of Mystica Boutique integrated in Mystica VR, so the flexibility for the color spread transformations is huge. Another great tool that simplifies the communication between Mystica VR and other softwares like Nuke and Fusion is the inclusion here of ST Maps. The ST Maps are coordinate maps that contain all the stitch information generated in Mystica VR. Not only the geometry information, but the optical information too. If for example we go to the ST map mode and change from color to posterize, which is an analysis mode for checking these ST maps, we will see here it makes zoom in some distortion in the lines that are related with the optical flow distortion. So basically we can move from Mystica VR to New Core Fusion, keeping the same exact stitch that has been done in Mystica VR with all the optical flow information. For every camera, we have a different map. So basically we can just render those maps and use the original footage with those maps to recreate the same stitch that has been done in Mystica VR in case that we need to make some compositing over those shots or some fine adjustment that can only be done in this kind of specific compositing tools. Okay, now let's talk about Mystica Boutique. Mystica Boutique is probably the best solution for virtual sets because it contains all the functionalities that we have seen in Mystica VR, but including more tools for compositing, color grading, and this amazing timeline that allows us to make edit with any kind of clip, including 360 clips. In this part of the demonstration, I will replicate the same steps that we have done in Mystica VR, but including more tools to get a better result and to talk about some of the flexibility that you will find in Mystica Boutique compared with Mystica VR. So the first thing we notice is that we have this amazing timeline that allows us again to make some editing and to manage every lens in my VR rig independently, which is great as we will see now in just a few seconds. The first thing I'm going to do is to load the preset for this camera, like we did in Mystica VR. So I switch to my browser and then I'm basically going to import the preset for this camera, which is the Kandao Obsidian Pro. Just drag and drop. And there we go. Now we have the preset loaded. We put it on top of my stack. And if we make double click, we will basically get the same result that we had in Mystica VR. As you can see, we have the same mismatch in color and all the geometry problems that we found previously. So basically I'm going to click in match color. First step as we did. There we go. Now we go to the options, increase the feather to 20 or something like that. There you go. And now I will switch to optical flow. Well, in here we basically fix with an edge point this area here. So let's do the same thing. Let's go back to the nearest camera, which is basically optical flow disabled. I'm going to enable the overlays. Take camera one at an edge point, just isolate this part, mask this part, and then again, recover the optical flow. Now we have the same result that we get in Mystica VR, but in Mystica Boutique we can improve the shot even more because we can just clean some areas, like for example the shadow here, that is something that cannot be done in Mystica VR because Mystica VR is only for stitching. Now, the Nadir part is not really relevant because, as we said, it's not going to be used in the virtual set, but this part here can be a bit problematic. So the first thing I'm going to do is to focus on the area that, that is going to be used, just to have a better reference of the, of the area of my interest. So I go to Jiao and just put in here like minus 150, so I have in the center the area that has more interest for me. And the shadow is here, so I'm going to go back, open my node graph. 
going to disable the thumbnails here to work even faster. So I will disable it in there. And then with the VR stitch selected, I will include a VR view effect. And the VR view effect is a node that allows me to basically change the way to work with VR. Uh, we have the landlock mode, we have the cube four by three, the tiny planet, the planner mode, which is basically like watching the VR environment from the inside. We have several modes in here. In fact, we're going to use the planner to isolate the area that I want to fix, which is basically the shadow area. So we focus on it. There we go. Now we go back and we're going to clone some areas to paint over and clean that part. So I'm going to open a vector paint effect. And with the vector paint selected, I'm going to go into the paint interface. And in a really quick mode with the clone for selected, I will just select some areas as reference and just paint over to basically remove the shadow. Again, I'm going to make it really quick. Um, you can spend more time and get better results, but in a really quick way, I can just remove that part. So now I click in all the shapes, all frames to keep uh, that clone area across the whole sequence. Go back and then back again. And in my node graph, I'm going to duplicate this link with Alt, create a new VR view mode and connect the vector paint as the secondary input of the VR view. The VR view works as well as a compositing node for 360 clip. So the secondary input dispatch that we have created here will be integrated in the original lat long mode using this VR view node in here. So we connect both, go to the second VR view effect. And here we will reverse the previous VR view camera, the first one that we set. And we get this result. As you can see, we have cleaned the tripod and now the shot is ready from the compositing point of view. Now perhaps it's the moment to talk about color grading. And when we talk about color grading, we need to talk about color space transformations too. In Mystica VR, we saw that we can set the input color space and the output color space. We can do the same thing with Mystica Boutique, going to VR Stitch, and then here in the camera defaults, we have the input color space, and in the output camera, we have the output color space. But Mystica Boutique has a much more flexible tool to manage this kind of color journey or color transformations. Instead of transform this color space from here, I can just go back and apply a unicolor node on top. So I will transform the whole stack. So I will go to FX, unicolor, and the unicolor is our color space transformation tool. So for example, I can select in here Rec 709 and Rec 709 in here and transform to AP1 and ACES CCT for the color grading. Because let's say we are working in an ACES workflow. Now on top, I can apply a color grade node and finally an ACES ODT node to transform from ACES CCT and AP1 to any color space, to any delivery color space. Let's say that, for example, we want to use P3 and D65, right? Now we can use our color grading node to create the shots for our virtual sets. We have a full color grading solution here designed by Colorist that can be used for grading these 360 shots. Not only that, we can export the grading here in a CDL form to be used in other softwares or in the delivery platform that we want. The fact that the Unicolor is an independent node by itself allows us to basically apply color space transformation not for the whole stack, but per camera here in the VR rig. So for example, if one of the cameras for any reason has a different color space, we can just apply a Unicolor here to manage the color space of that specific camera. Same thing, for example, if we are using raw files. For example, in this shot, which is a red file, we can just manage the color space directly in the parameters, in the raw params here, by just changing the gamma curve and the color space. So in that way, you can make any color space transformation internally in the clip and then later with a unicolor. The settings here are available as well in Mystica VR by going to the raw params. And in here, you will see the settings, the gamma curve, the color space, and the 16 bits ACES transformation if we're working in an ACES workflow. As a final step, you can select the 360 output for your shot. So for example, you can enable here a VR view mode and you can export this shot in the traditional lat long mode, but you can export it as well in a cube 4x3 or in a cube equi angular 3x2. So you have several formats here for delivering your shots to another software or directly to the virtual set. 
As you have seen, Mystica VR and Mystica Boutique forms an ecosystem that covers all the needs for virtual sets production. We cover stitching, color grading, compositing, finishing, and of course the final delivery. And it communicates really well with other softwares in complex workflows. I hope you like this presentation and see you in the next video.